I had another panic attack. And I thought I had the shit beat. Tony Soprano is going to have a panic attack in this therapy session. It's gonna happen a little under four minutes from now. The way James Gandolfini builds to that attack is only one reason why his performance as Tony is probably the greatest acting achievement ever committed to the screen, small or big. You could pick a thousand scenes from this groundbreaking series, a thousand moments to highlight Gandolfini's artistry, but I think this one in particular demonstrates what he does so well, how he carries us with him through a complex sequence of emotions. It's not the first time it's happened recently. I wish you had told me. Yeah, well, I wish you'd cured it. So the scene is all about Tony's recent panic attacks, getting to the bottom of why they've been occurring so frequently. The most recent one happened earlier in the same episode, after Tony learned that his cousin, Tony B, was involved in a shooting that he shouldn't have been. When the attacks first reappeared, what was going on in your life? You had just rebuffed my affections. Tony strikes at Dr. Melfi twice, blaming her first for not solving his psychological problem, and then for causing it. But the way Gandolfini plays it, you can see that he's not really convinced of her culpability, and says that with his tone, his eyes, and the tilt of his head. Here's our first little foreshadowing of the agitated state he's going to work himself into. It's a small thing, a hand on the head, but it signals to us that Tony is struggling, and in these therapy scenes, when he's confined to a chair, Gandolfini has a very limited mobility to work with, but he makes the most of it. When you actually passed out, were you thinking about me? I walked or? into my house and uh, the cleaning girl was crying on the phone about her cousin who went off the road at a Mexican bus wreck or something. And I remember just feeling inside like I wanted to fucking choke her because there was always something with her. You can hear the musicality in his voice, some combination of leftover Italian rhythms and a New York inflected North Jersey accent. Crying on the phone about a cousin who went off the road. Crying on the phone about a cousin who went off the road at a Mexican bus wreck or something. As you'll see in this scene, Gandolfini uses these musical rhythms to build to larger and larger crescendos of anger. Feeling inside like I wanted to fucking choke her because there was always something with her. When did it next happen? Uh, my cousin Tony was up at a house. He went to borrow some tools and they weren't there. I was inside talking to Carmela and started to feel that, uh, you know, that it passed. Gandolfini's rhythmic anger, like waves crashing on the shore, is hypnotic, drawing you deeper into his mental and emotional space with each new cycle. As it intensifies, this push and pull almost mimics the kind of breathing that leads to hyperventilation, a key symptom of panic attacks. You were so concerned about your cousin's foot, you collapsed on the golf course. I worry about him. He's a grown man, isn't he? Is he in danger of losing the foot or? Fuck his foot, it's not his foot. Forget the foot. I worry about him, he, he's, he's right out of fucking jail, okay? What's important here is that Tony is lying to Melfi about the cause of his latest attack. He realizes that his cousin has something to do with it, but for legal reasons, he can't admit the real cause having to do with the murder. Now this prefigures the greater lie he's about to tell in a second. The reason he went to prison is he got pinched hijacked on a truckload of beta boxes in 86. And they hooked him up with a Rico when he got 17 years. And I was supposed to be there the night of the jacket. Now here comes the lie. Why didn't you go? I was jumped by a bunch of Moulinians. They were trying to take my shoes. I fought them off, but they cut my fucking head open. A fucking jigaboo cock-sucking motherfuckers. Okay, forget that. So the reason he didn't go to jail, and his cousin did, was because Tony was jumped by some unidentified black males, which is the title of this episode, and also sometimes a code for when a person is hit or hurt by mafia members that can't be named. Jackie Jr. was shot to death at the Boonton Projects by uh, drug dealers. Tony's racist outburst is ostensibly directed at whoever beat him up. The only thing is, it never happened. That's tremendous guilt to carry. He went to Nam, I was 4F. And that's the way our friends look at it. 
One of the amazing things about The Sopranos is its use of silence. And nowhere in the show is silence more prominent than in Melfi's office. I mean, it would be impossible to score these scenes. The script is asking Lorraine Bracco and Gandolfini to do things that music is too blunt to follow. After all, Tony's anger is complex. Whether it's directed at Melfi or his cousin or unidentified black males, the actual target is himself. Depression is rage turned inward. He hates his own failings and he hates that he's embarrassed by them. Yeah. He also uses his anger as a shield, a screen to block deeper self-knowledge. The writers are asking Gandolfini to do all that and at the same time to show that shield cracking. He does that by responding to the silence in the office, to the hollow echoes of his rage. His subtle retreating postures after an outburst betray his insecurities. Run out of fucking jail, okay? You know, I wish you'd cured it. And that's the way our friends look at it. No wonder you're having anxiety attacks. Yeah. Maybe if you came clean with him. It's the idea of the truth that finally triggers it. Yeah, well, yeah. You okay? Yeah. Go on, go on, go on, go on with what you were saying. Are you having an attack now? No, no. I had a huge lunch, that's all. It's, it's gas. Watch the way he wrestles and fights with his own body, refusing to accept what's happening, as if words could overrule reality. All right, the night he got pinched, I had a fucking panic attack, all right? From my mother, goddammit. I didn't even know what it was then. All right, just relax. Focus on your breathing. It's not that, I just, I just need some fucking Pino or something. No, just please focus. <coughs> I've got my medical bag in case. Gandolfini depicts the visual symptoms of panic attacks, dizziness, shortness of breath, chest pain, sweating, feeling faint. And through them, he confesses to the truth of why he missed that job all those years ago. He does it in three parts. First, with a lingering anger at himself yelling through his attack. I had a fight with my mother and I had a fucking panic attack. Okay, forget that for now. Come on, we're supposed to come over with some fucking yarn for, for, for some booties my mother was making mad of. Then he seems to crumple and give right. in. He resigns himself to the confession, oh, looking defeated. Fuck, Notice his posture here. Focus on your breathing. I said to her, I said, Carmella loves you. You know, you gotta understand, she's got a three month old. Finally, as his emotion ramps back up, it becomes infused with an intense vulnerability, as if he's on the verge of tears. She kept fucking, she kept going, and I, I started screaming at her. So I left. I walked out the door, I went over to the car, opened the door, boom. Cut my fucking head open. And your cousin doesn't know this. No, I lied. What am I gonna tell him? What am I gonna tell all of them? I had a fight with my mother and I, and I fainted. That's why I missed the job. It's Gandolfini's ability to convey these deep inner reserves of vulnerability and insecurity to let us glimpse the tender source of his destructive passions that make him a sympathetic character on which the entire series depends. You know, actors don't always get the gift of great writing, but when they do, it's not just an opportunity, it's also a responsibility, a challenge to meet the nuance of the words with nuance in performance. What the writers asked Gandolfini to navigate in this scene would be difficult for any actor, but he pulls it off with power and precision. And he had to do the same for nearly every scene in all 86 hour long episodes. It's a remarkable legacy. You know, sometimes what happens in here is like taking a shit. Yes, okay. Although I preferred to think of it more like childbirth. Trust me. It's like taking a shit. Hey everybody, 
Thank you so much for watching. This episode was sponsored by NordVPN. NordVPN allows you to take control of your online experience by being an intermediary when you connect to the internet, either through their app or their Chrome extension. They have thousands of servers in over 60 countries that protect your privacy by hiding your IP address from prying eyes. Also, speaking of great shows like The Sopranos, using NordVPN allows you to access region-specific content from anywhere in the world. For example, if you live in the US, you can't watch Fargo on Netflix right now, another awesome series. But with NordVPN, you can switch your server to the UK and it's available. NordVPN is giving my viewers 68% off a two-year plan plus one additional month for free when you go to nordvpn.com slash nerdwriter or use the code nerdwriter. This special offer makes your subscription just $3.71 per month. If you're not completely happy, Nord has a risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time.